Hello everyone, welcome to Reach Goals. Today I have two different questions, but they are related to each other. Let's see what the question is. So how to identify the tenant in multi-tenant application and why do you need to identify the tenant in SaaS applications, right? So let's understand what multi-tenant application is. So basically multi-tenant architecture helps you run single instance of application and it serves multiple customers. So if you look into the applications like Gmail, Yahoo, or even the GitHub Workday, they are all working in multi-tenant architecture. That means the backend is common and the frontend and the front end is different, right? So the backend can serve multiple customers based on their subscription or based on their need. So that is how the multi-tenant architecture works. So let's say if you, if you look into this picture, you have tenant one and tenant two, and they in turn connect to load balancers and the load balancers in turn connects to the app servers and the app servers in turn connect to the database, which is specific for the tenant one and tenant two, right? In this infrastructure, if the, if the application wants to serve the tenant one, they should understand who the tenant is, right? So that means from your application side, you should have a mechanism to figure out who the tenant is. And based on that, you can give access to the tenant one database and the, ins and the information specific to tenant one can be served to them, right? So we want to know how to do this. So before going into how to figure out who the tenant is, let's also understand what is the necessity for doing this, right? So you have multiple reasons for doing this. Let's say the first one is you have to control the features. Right? So in this kind of application, there might be multiple feature which has been built by the company and they want to provide only specific feature for any specific tenant based on their subscription, right? So that is what we call it as a feature control. The next one is access control versus data security. So the tenant one should be accessing only the data related to the tenant one and it should not access any data related to the tenant two. In this way also we need to know who the tenant is, right? The third one is tenant based resource control. So that there may be a subs subscription where the tenant might be asking for uh, one GB of database, uh, database facility or they might be asking for two GB of database facility, right? So they have to control the resource based on the tenant, right? That's what I call it as a tenant based resource control. So the next one is tenant specific reporting. Definitely there could be a need for reporting related to any specific tenant. Let's say you want to know uh, what is a, who is the tenant one and what is a, what is a, what are the records they have been accessing in the database, right? So that is what we call it as a tenant specific reporting, right? And the last one is, uh, is tenant specific features. Let's say there might be multiple subscriptions, like you no, know, there may be $5 subscription or $10 subscription or they even call it a subscriptions like uh, silver plan, platinum plan, gold plan. Based on that, different features are given to the tenants. So if I want to uh, differentiate the features and give specific features to the tenant, then I need a mechanism to figure out who the tenant is, right? So based on that only, I can limit the features at the back end and then I can serve to the tenant, right? So these are the real reasons we need to figure out who the tenant is, right? So let's come into the original question like how to identify the tenant, right? There are multiple ways to identify the tenant. Here I'm going to talk about three important ways which are primarily used in the popular applications, right? So the first one is URL based tenant identification, right? So if you look into the GitHub, you will see something like uh, HTTPS colon slash slash github.com slash Yahoo. So Yahoo is a tenant and based on the URL, you can identify who the tenant is and that URL can be used to generate a unique ID and that ID ID can be stored in your database and for any future reference that ID can be used to differentiate between the different tenants, right? That is what we call it as a URL based identification. The second one is domain based. So if you look into the application like uh, Workday, they have something like HTTPS colon slash slash workday dot ale dot edu. So ale dot u is an university and with the help of a full domain name, they can identify who the tenant who the tenant is, right? So now in this mechanism also, once they identify the domain URL, so for that specific domain URL, they can have a uh, tenant ID generated in the back end and that generated tenant ID can be used for any future references that can be used to solve the different purpose of the tenant, right? And the final one is based on the request parameter. So let's say you have a domain URL and within that you can attach the tenant ID within that and this tenant ID can be used in your app server to figure out who the tenant is and based on the tenant ID, different features or different resources can be provided from the backend to the customers or to the tenants, right? 
So this is a sample code snippet to understand who the host is. Let's say the URL is like something like, you know, github.com slash Yahoo. And if you have this method from that URL, you will understand who the host is. And based on the host, you can generate the tenant ID and the gen generated tenant ID can be used for future purposes, right?